This is so cool. <laughs> I'm just like so excited. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California and this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. And today we are going on a field trip. Okay, so for today's field trip, we are out in Gustine, yeah. California with Trevor and Aaron at Hidden Valley Dairy. And this is my first dairy tour ever. So I'm really excited about it because I live in California, which is a huge dairy state. And where I live, I constantly am driving past dairies. Um, I don't know if Erin told you, but her mom's dairy is like 15 minutes from oh, me. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So we're basically neighbors. Grew up we're neighbors. We're basically neighbors. <laughs> I didn't know. Um, so yeah, so this is where we are today. And I just wanted to see what was your guys' background in agriculture? Obviously, I just gave it away that her mom has a dairy. But what about you? Did you come from dairy background? Yeah, yes. Uh, I'm uh, fourth generation. My dad started uh, with his grant with his dad, and, and uh, they actually started in Denair, and then we moved to Modesto in '91, and then we moved here in Gustine in uh, 2013. Yep. So we've been here for about seven years. This will be seven years. Just, actually, just hit seven we just years. We just hit, yeah, just hit seven years. November this week, 16th. So. So. Yeah. so you came from dairy background yeah. as well, and you grew up on the dairy your whole life. Yep. And and were you planning on staying in the dairy industry? I was. I was. Did he just like swoop you up and you're like, I'm stuck in it now. Yeah. No, I was planning on staying in the dairy industry. It's always funny because my mom and dad always joke that I needed to marry a dairy farmer. And I needed to find one because I loved it so much. And so incidentally, I lucked you out. Found one. So Good job. I found a dairy farmer. So I just think, well, it's just a blessing. Now I have little ones and they get to be out here every day with us. And I just think that's more of a blessing is to be able to raise them on the farm. So yeah, I really enjoy that aspect of it. But yeah, I grew up on a dairy and yeah, I'm also fourth generation. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. So you guys sell all, you don't sell any direct market stuff, right? Correct. Okay. But you have Instagram. Yes. So if people want to follow you on Instagram, yes. where's, where, where's that at? Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm a, I'm actually CA Dairy Wife. And then on Facebook, um, I'm Hidden Valley Dairy on Facebook. Okay, yeah. so they can follow along. She shares so much cool dairy stuff. Like stuff, like lately I've been like <laughs> mind blown, things I never knew. So, and I think that's great because this is what's been fun for me is that even though I've grown up in ag my entire life, I know nothing about dairy, you yeah. know? So it's a great way to learn where your milk comes from. Yeah, I think it's great, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so we are heading into the milk barn. Yes, we are. All right, let's do it. Yes where all the cows get milk. I'm excited. <laughs> and we've got the whole crew, the, the Valks came with me. We, we decided to come along. Your they daughters. wanted a dairy tour. Yeah, <laughs> this is the ultimate dairy tour. I'm excited. So the first big tank was, it was just the milk tank. So that's where all the milk gets pumped into. So after it comes out of the machines, it goes into there. Then as you kind of went over, we saw the milk, uh, the milk filters. So that just kind of milk would go and travel through there. Then it got pumped into what we call the heat exchanger. So for us, so when it comes out of the cow, cows are warm-blooded. So it's around 100 degrees when it comes out of the cow, but we have to get it cooled off uh, to below um, to below 40 degrees. And so that this machine does that. So that on this machine, there's all these little plates. On one side of the plate is ice cold water, and on the other side of the plate is the milk. And they never touch, but as the milk goes through there, it just cools the milk down. So when it goes into the tanks, now we see the tanks over here. It's going to be all cooled off, so it has to be there. And then this is actually the temperature chart. On that temperature chart, um, our guy that comes and picks up the milk will have to see that, that all the milk that's in that tank has stayed cooled in that tank the whole time. Mm -hmm. So, and then, the, yeah, and each tank will hold actually 8,000 gallons of milk. Wow. And we send three of those a day. Wow. Do you have a question, it's, Ryan? I'll just say it's 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 happy cows are from California, right? <laughs> that's that's right. I, think, I think that's what it. I think that's what <laughs> it is. Made that slogan. I drink about a gallon of milk we, a day. We can tell. Oh wow! Oh, because milk is good for you, right? right yeah, good. exactly. <laughs> I am so excited because this is my first. This is my first dairy experience really okay. at all. Really? Okay. Which is like, I, there's so many dairies around me. I mean, we're in California. Yes. Are we the number one dairy state, do you know? I think we are the number one dairy state. Yeah, we have the most dairies, I think, in California. We actually produce um, over, 
I'd say I, I think 20% of the nation's milk supply is in California. Wow. So for okay. California dairy. So we are, um, over here we are now in our milking parlor. So this is called a parallel parlor. So what this means is that the cows come in and their, um, and their butts are towards us kind of. So that's just kind of, means they're parallel looking at us. That's all it means. So um, we have a double 35, so we can milk 70 cows at once. Um, it only takes about about five to seven minutes to milk a cow. So that's all it takes. Um, I can kind of explain how the machine works. Yes, I so would this love is our, that. So this is our, this is our milking unit. Um, this is called a pulsation line. So this actually sends air into the milking claws. So this is called the milking claw. And these are called the liners. And so this air will come into the pulsation line and it'll go into this rubber liner. And once the machine goes on, it's gonna send air in and out. And as it does that, it's just mimicking like if you were to hand milk a cow in your hand to go open and close, that's what this thing is mimicking. So we do, it's all done electronically. We'll hit this button up here and the machine will go on. So what he's doing first, um, our first step is he's gonna come and wipe the cows clean. So he's coming in, he's wiping them with a the disinfectant. Because of course they're animals and they're out inside the pens and it's as clean as possible, but they're still animals, right? So we have to clean them. So he's cleaning them first with a disinfectant and then Later he'll come on um, and put the machines on, and the cows will, and it, all the cows will get milk. The cows really enjoy coming here. If you guys can hear behind me, it's really calm in here. So the cows, people sometimes will say, "Oh, it's so mean. The cows hate getting milk. They're hooked up to machines all day long." But the, uh, the cows are only in here for like maybe eight minutes, and they're getting done. They're gonna walk out and they're gonna go eat in their pen and rest and sleep the whole rest of the day. So they do this in the morning and in the evening. So this is of course so it happens twice a day on our farm. That's what we do, so. And it's really gentle. Obviously the cows, they're not mooing or, cause that's a, of course a sign that it would be, it'd be painful if they were if they were in distress, they, they kind of moo. But as you can hear, the cows are all calm in here. So yeah, they're means very they're not, quiet. not stressed out at all. This is a very, like, if we open the pen for them to come get milk, and they know cows are all about routine. So they love routine. So if we are even half an hour late to milking, you will hear them in the pen. So when you open the gate, they'll all start walking out and they want to come get milk. So, okay. yeah. So do they, they kind of get in these areas by themselves? They know yes. for basically what's going on. They do, yeah. So yeah, so once this whole line is done, so this line's actually done getting milk okay. pretty soon. So they're gonna come, so once, once they're done uh, on this side, they're gonna come and put the post dip, we call it. So that's just the blue dip. And then this whole line of cows, it has, um, it's just gonna, it's just gonna oh, raise so up what, in front of so them. So what happens? So this is the, um, this is the automatic um, gate. Okay. I don't have any. There's no cows coming out today, but but the cows will walk through, and their button, the little on this cow's kind of the white little tag on the top. On, on the, the top of the ear. Yeah, on the top of the ear. Yes, yeah, the, the little white little button. Yes. Yeah. So right there, that little white round. Yes. So the cows can walk through, and that. There's a computer system and it'll read that button and it automatically will tell if we want to get that cow out or not. Okay. Do you ever do you ever worry about a cow kicking like back? Is that a thing with cows or no? It's not that big of an issue. Like they would only do that if they didn't know you were there. So okay. there's like there's like a flight zone on a cow. So if you're right behind the cow, they can't see you. Okay. But if you go to the side of the cow or the other side and let them know you're there, they shouldn't kick They're you. They're good. So it's okay. more of a shock thing, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, so, this is, so this is just the holding pen. So in the summer, of course, it gets pretty hot. So when the cows are all together, it gets pretty warm in here. So we don't want that because that kind of causes a lot of stress for the cows. So that's why we have the fans that you saw up there. So those, those will be on. And actually the, actually, the stuff hanging down is actually water. So it's a sprinkler system. So it'll go on and get the cows wet and cool them off, and so that's how it keeps them nice and cool in the holding pen. So this, of course, it's actually not, like, it's, it should be a nice, calm environment for them, and they're gonna be cooled off as they wait before they come in and get right. milked, so, yeah. And I mean, you said they like routine, so when they're here, they know what's happening. Yes. It's not like a shock, and they're like, why are we crowded, yeah. or whatever. Like, they know what's going yeah. on, yeah. and you keep them nice and cool, they yeah. get milked. He's about five months old, um, and he's come back from our calf ranch. So they're, uh, they'll make the cycle down the barn and come back over here, and this is about 12 months old, so. So these guys have been gone for the last four months, five four months, months, five yeah. months. They said we send them off every day, they come and pick them up, and it's sent to a, a specialty calf raiser, so they focus just on those first, you know, four months, five months. Um, they've got the system down really well, especially in the winter time, they do good and everything like that. Winter's always tough with calves with the rain and humidity and cold weather and stuff with pneumonia, those type of things, so. Um, 
that's why we send them off and so and so these ones are going on vacation so these ones are all pregnant and they go on vacation um, for the last two months of their pregnancy and then when they get close to calving we'll put them in our in the maternity barn which is where we were where all the almond shells were and that's and they'll go and calve over there so they get to go take a break just eat and relax and get ready to have their next baby so nice yeah I could take a couple months and do that. That'd be fine. <laughs> I know. With me. It's like their maternity leave. <laughs> oh, there perfect. We we'll there we go. That. Yeah. So. This, so this one's empty. Yep. These just got brought into the milk barn, and then you can see the ones coming up the middle. And they're shutting this pin here. So this one's all empty, and they'll be back here in about another 50, uh, 20 minutes. They'll start having cows come back in. So. All right. So this is our freestyle bedding. So this is composted uh, manure solids that we have off our separator, and we'll see that we come in here and we fill this. Uh, once a week all the cows get new bedding and uh, this is raked daily so it stays nice and fluffy like it is and again these are the freestalls so that every cow has their individual bed and they're made daily so it's a nice smooth fluffy bedding for them and the rail system is just to keep them so that they're when they do stand up or when they use the restroom it ends up here in the flush lane so it gets flushed away off to the lagoon rather than getting the beds dirty and messy and muddy so um, makes for a really nice uh, fluffy bedding source. Um, we compost it down so bacteria wise there's very little bacteria load in it. It's a very clean and dry comfortable bedding for the cows too. So after so right here this the, the manure comes into here yep so then it gets flushed. Yep uh, just the flush lane there's a valve here and so we uh, flush six times a day. The water will come in here through uh, probably two three minutes each lane is what it runs. And then it gets, uh, we'll, we'll go see our separator and it all runs through the separator, swept right out the heavy solids, and then it goes into our settling pond where we'll use the rest of it for, uh, for crops and, and so forth. Is that, <laughs> that's soft bedding, huh? Maybe you want to, maybe you want to sleep in here for the night. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to, do you, you want to sleep here? Like, ah, I don't know. It's fun to play in though, huh? So yeah, the barns where the water flushes from, there's a floating pump here in the pond. Okay. Okay, this is our storage pond temporarily. We're cleaning out our other ones. You can see the excavator in the back. So when the barns flush, when the water comes down to clean the lanes, that's where it flushes from. Okay, so this pond this right pond here. This pond right here okay. in that pump. It all comes out centralized, pipes underground and everything to drain into this pump. And okay. then this pump here pumps it. We pump it over the screen set, set up, the separator. Walk over there and we can see go it. check what? that out. Okay, yeah. So it's a really fine mesh screen that the water slides over. Uh, they use it a lot in like irrigation setups for separating trash out of the canals and different things like that. You're probably familiar with it mm -hmm. with the Ammons. Um, but ours is set up to separate out the manure solids. Okay. So this gets about 50, 60% of the solids out of the water. And then that's what makes this pile here. So it's a nice loose, like you saw in the video when we were holding the, the bedding, it's a nice fibrous loose bedding material. And then beyond that, our guy, you can see him with the loader, he's loading up the stuff that's dried. Okay. And then uh, composted down and then we store it here for the winter time. Okay, so this has been separated from the water. Yep. Mm -hmm. This and needs to be put into rows and composted down. Yeah. Which is which is kind of behind this pile. We can go look and see the Okay, rows so where are... where is the filtered water go? It goes back to the same pond. Oh, so it just is keep running Correct. through. Yep. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes and sense. All, yeah, and all the water so it's all the water from cleaning the water troughs, all the water from cleaning inside the milk barn, mm -hmm. um, water used for irrigation because we have to buy some water. And then like if there's any runoff from the fields, everything, all all drains lead to the lagoon that will that will all get so recycled no again. So no water wasted. No water Correct. wasted. Correct. No water nope. wasted. It all gets recycled yes. as much as it can. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. So there's something else back there you want us to see, you yes. said? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you want to see the, if, if you want to see the composting yeah, I rows see and it. the... Uh, we want to see everything, right, Reagan? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go get Dale. Get your buddy. You can play with him in a second. <laughs> your buddy. <laughs> so is that the amount of water that comes out constantly? So that yeah, <laughs> it's off right now. Moves fast. Uh, the water spraying is just to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out on okay. the screen. But yeah, you can see the solids built up on the screen. It might turn on while we're here or not. It's it's on an automatic sensor. Good. But yeah, so it separates out the solids and then down there in the motor there's a screw press which dries it out. So when we get it here in the pile, it's about 30% dry matter. Okay. So that's all the water that's left remaining in it. And then we dump it into rows like you see out there. And the guy in the loader, that row is ready to move up here. Uh, the other two rows on the left are still needing to dry. So that's why we have the composter hooked up. And like Aaron said, we go through that weekly 
depending on the weather, summertime about four weeks it's ready to go. And we get it down to about 45, 48% dry matter and then it's ready for the bedding. Wow. Yeah. So how many acres do you guys run here for the feed? Uh, we got about 600 here on this place and then we have another ranch uh, down the road just a bit that's about another 150. So and seven. you guys do that all yourself? Correct, yeah. Okay. Sorry, we do all yeah, the planting, you. no you're good. We do all the planting, field work, uh, the harvesting we'll sometimes custom out. We have a guy that comes and does the chopping for us. Uh, we have our own swather, but usually we have a couple other guys come help us swath for the for the winter crops. And then the corn chopping, we have a, the same guy that has a chopper. He comes out. Frank, Frankie Borba, I think he's on Instagram. Oh, F -Borba I know. Yeah. Yeah. Borba Inc. Yeah. I was going to say, we have Borba in our area, it's but it's got to be a different Borba. It he's a pretty big outfit. Borba, yeah. He goes down to Fresno up to, yeah. not sure how far north he goes. But, so do you guys do any grain? No. It's no just grain. all silage. And now, why don't cows eat grain? Well, they do eat grain. We do feed them grain. Okay. But it's more efficient for us to produce the whole crop and harvest the whole crop. Yeah, because then you're getting, I've kind of heard that, you get the whole plant versus right. just the one ear. Yep. You're really yeah. taking advantage of the entire thing. Okay, so we are in another part of the dairy that is called the kitchen. Yes. So why is this called the kitchen? All right, so this is this is where we go. Uh, this is where all our feed ingredients are to feed our cows every day. So we feed them twice a day. So they always have fresh feed um, behind um, us over here. This is our, this is what we call our big mixing bowl. So we, so um, inside um, are these big knives and stuff, big vertical knives in there. And we'll put all of our feed ingredients in there. And what I think is super cool, so we actually work with a professional nutritionist. So because because our because our cows are athletes and they are they are working hard producing well so we want to feed them well and so um so our nutritionist will actually give us um we, um, we call them it's called like a ration or their diet and so it'll have all the different ingredients that we have on hand and he will formulate a diet and it actually goes into a computer so on the side we can kind of look over this thing um there's a little box on the side here Oh, I here. see that. Okay. Box. Got like a little computer it's there. A computer thing. Okay. And so this is our, it's like our feed monitoring system. So it has all the inventory of all the feed that we have on our dairy is in a computer. And then this screen will come up. So if we, so we're going to go feed our high cow pen. So like our high producing cow pen, um, it'll go and tell how many pounds of corn silage have to go in, how many pounds of hay have to go in, how much of the almond holes have to go in. So it'll do everything. And so we know exactly how much our cows are getting for each pen because feed is the highest expense on a dairy. So we want to of course utilize every ounce of feed that we have and not waste anything. So that's why we have the feed watch or the feed monitoring system. So we have, so in our computer, so if we're going to make a high mix, this is a high mix. So this has, this has, this has all holes. the different things. Yes. You can so this, see the almond, is that what that yep. hole, right? Almond holes. Has almond holes, has the canola, has the amino plus, has the vitamins mixes in here the and then cotton everything yeah so then yeah so just we kind of like our main big ingredients is going to be the corn silage going in going to be the hay um, and almond holes going by themselves and then we put our high mix in and we okay. also put roll corn kind of by itself too okay and then and then that all gets mixed in the truck and then we add water and whey at the end and then it gets fed so and you said you guys have a vet on staff as well right Did yes you see that? okay yeah so yeah so every week we have a vet that comes he comes every monday um, he does a lot of pregnancy checks on our cows, so pregnancy, because of course we have to keep having babies to keep, of course cows have to make milk, to, they have to have a baby to make milk, right? <laughs> They're mammals. And so they come and do that, and then he also looks if we have any other herd health problems, he's there to check that. Um, we have what's called like a vet client relationship, um, so we have to have that. And then he also overlooks uh, the farm program, which is called Farmers Assuring Responsible Management, and that's just um, our... Uh, it's kind of like a national program, but it's just for more for animal. It's, it's more for animal welfare and well-being. So, is there anything that you feel like you really wish people knew about dairies? Like, is there, I, I'm sure there's a lot of things, but if there's, is there any just like one thing where you just really feel like I wish people knew this? I think I wish people knew that they're all like most of us, most farms, like 98% of California dairies are run by families, and so we're so we're out. So it's a it's a family business, not big corporations. So I'm out here with my husband and my and my in-laws, and we have all of our employees. So I feel like I want people really to know that we really care about our animals. Otherwise, it's a it's hard work. We have to do it 24 hours a day, every day on holidays. We never take a day off, so because cows need to get milk. So I feel like I want people to know that. We just we really have a heart for it. We care about it. So I think just a lot of families are behind a lot of these big operations. So even yeah. though we do milk 2,000 cows, we are still a family operation. Yeah. So I think that's what I really wanted people to know about. 
And that, that of course, milk is safe too. It's not, it doesn't have all these added things in it. I feed it to my kids and I, went, I eat it, so I'm not gonna sell a product to, to, like, to anybody that I wouldn't eat myself. Mm -hmm. So I always feel like maybe everybody in our culture probably has that thing. Yeah. They're like, we're not trying to kill you, we're trying to feed you. So yeah. I think that's what I want people to really know too, so. Okay, yeah. good, thank yeah. you. He's smiling. <laughs> so is this is this truck owned by you guys? No. So we have this is a different uh, milk hauler that we have a uh, contracted out, and he comes and picks up our milk for us. So I'll okay. Kinda, yeah, we can kind of talk about what he does and takes all the samples and stuff for you. So he's gonna back up into here. Into but, this guy? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. you gotta have good backup skills. Yeah. I could do it. I'm very <laughs> confident in my backing up in. It's one of my few skills. Oh, back it up. <laughs> I you know. know, I'm like, well, it has to head out the window. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. do that, yeah. My dad taught me, I don't know when. I didn't really work on the farm as a young kid. Oh, you know, okay. like a lot yeah, of people yeah. did, and I just didn't. Okay. Um, but at some point, my dad taught me how to back up, and it's something I take pride in. Yes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's true. I had to do, I had like one day, my dad's like, you gotta go in the trailer and just learn to back it up. So I, I just go in the truck and I had my head out the window and that's how I learned one whole day I was like busy with it, so. You gotta learn. Yeah. All right, so he's empty right now. Yes, so he's, yeah, he, he's empty. He's gonna come in, get loaded up. This is a really well insulated tank. So of course our milk got cooled off to, it's probably, it's probably around 38 degrees right now. So when it goes into this tank, it's gonna stay that cold. So but we'll go in, the uh, um, kind of when he's, when he goes in, he's gonna come in, he's gonna take a sample of the milk, he's gonna test it for antibiotics here on the farm. Um, and if it, and if, if, it, if it for some reason had antibiotics in it, he couldn't take it. And the whole tank would go dump down the drain and we don't get paid for milk that day. Cause we're, um, so that's, the, any milk that you have in the store, organic or conventional, is has no antibiotics in it. But on our conventional dairy farm, if a cow sometimes gets sick, we're humans, we get sick, we have to go to the doctor, they prescribe antibiotics to us. And when we, um, and so we have a, we have a, actually a script from the doctor on how much medicine that cow can get and her meat and milk withholding on that specific drug. So, so while she's getting medicine and getting treated, she's in her own, she's in her own hospital pen. We call it a hospital pen. She's getting monitored, looked at, and she's going to get herself worked back to health. And then once her milk tests clear of antibiotics, then she goes back into the herd. So how big is that truck? Do you know? I think that tanker, I think it holds, I think one tanker is like, I think it's 68, so it's not a full 8,000. Okay. Full 8, 000, okay. So we'll take some, yeah, because we, we produce um, a little over 20,000 gallons a day. So we need to have almost three of those trucks. Okay. So okay. Gonna, yeah. So this is straight from the cows? Yeah. yeah. So now there's probably more milk coming in. Wow. It looks like milk. Yeah, and by the time it leaves this tank, it gets cooled. It's probably on our farm less than a minute, or like a minute, minute and a half. Wow. So. As you guys know, we've got Ryan, the California farmer, and we've got Aaron, and we've got a little cross. There's like a little tiff right here, right? Oh, a tiff. Uh -huh. There's a tiff right here because you've got, you've got the dairy. This is milk, right? Yep. And then you've got the almond milk. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. think about that. Guy right here, the almonds. <laughs> but what people don't realize is that those two commodities, those are, are California commodities. That is, California is the number one dairy producing state. Yep. Also the number one almond producing state. It is, and so, the, so with all the almonds, there's a lot of byproducts. And so, and so of course we kind of need each other. So, so actually what we're actually standing on are actually almond shells. So this is actually a bedding that we use for our cows. Um, so this is, of course, a byproduct of the of the industry. There actually is some holes in here; they're kind of mixed in. But we actually will actually feed the whole part, which will once we go out there, we we'll actually feed the almond hole to our cows. So, so they uh, so all that stuff would have ended up in a landfill. But because there's a lot of dairy cows in California, we're able to use a lot from the almond industry, and then maybe use some of our manure. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, are these all boys? Can you tell? So I'm still um, learning how to tell instantly. So the Two boys, yeah, one these girl. Are boys, yeah. So this is so we actually do. Um, we ha um, these are actually Holstein Angus crosses. So oh, these are actually beef calves, and then this one is a little girl. So okay, this is, a, this is a little heifer calf. So that's a Holstein. But okay. Yeah. Do you guys raise beef calves? 
Um, no. Okay. No, we don't. But yeah, okay. so they just uh, they get a little extra premium. Do they get to go to a next a, a different home then for the rest of their life? Yes, yes, they do. They go to a, a, a calf ranch, which raises them, and then they'll. But they won't the come beef. back here, right? No, no, okay. they're not for dairy; they're for beef. So right, right. They'll enter into a, go into a feedlot. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. There's a lot of the marbling is much better on them, you know, with the cross between uh, Angus and Holstein and straight Holstein, and the growth rates and everything else is much better. So. Okay. So they all get milked twice a day, and then they're away from their beds. You know, about 45 minutes each time. So. And so is that, are these girls here heading to milking or are yep. they just moving yep. between barns? Nope, they're just heading to milking. Okay. So they're bringing in one new pin um, and they'll be coming back again. So we do all the breeding and everything in the morning, all the working with the cows. So in the morning when they're coming back from the pins, we lock them up and the breeder checks through them and vet check and stuff like that. But um, afternoons are pretty free to do whatever they want to do. So. Cool. One thing like to note just with cows in barns is that like if you were to have them outside and it was like it was like 110 degrees, the cows would choose to be in the shade. It's just like I always say cows are smart, you know, we like and they will they'll let us know if something's not comfortable or if something's wrong. And so they're gonna go where it's most comfortable for them. So that's why they really kind of hang out here in the barn so yeah a lot of cows people, are smarter than chickens <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of people sometimes with the with the confinement setup which this is you know we have them in barns we have them here all the time they're not out roaming in the pasture and a lot of people see that and be like man that's not that's not nice and pasture is great for five or six months out of the year but when it's rainy or when it's hot especially with the cows that need to get milked uh, this is a better setup for them we have the feed on this side so the feed stays clean they're not pooping in their feed and you know those kind of issues that come up uh, we're able to keep them much cleaner and just kind of give them the best attention that they need and the best comfort that they can yeah okay oh you got a special girl well, I got I got yeah the red ones are mine so the red Holsteins <laughs> are mine so when I married my husband he had no red Holsteins <laughs> and like, like, those are my favorite some. and so my mom for my wedding <laughs> present actually gave me a red cow to <laughs> have here and so so then we started going so to this one here. Ones. Yeah, so yeah, she was actually a birthday present. How do you? How can ago. you like really tell it's her just by her number, or can it's you just tell? Well, is it like just tell, yeah. a child? Yeah. So Rosie. This is, this is Rosie. <laughs> I don't want to stress you out, but you're beautiful. Yeah. I've got a question. Yeah. So, how do you deal with the temperatures? How do you deal with cold? How do you deal with heat? So the yeah, cold is actually pretty, uh, especially in California, it's good for the cows. Uh, any, their thermo neutral is about 60 degrees. So okay. if we're wearing like a light sweater or something, the cows are perfectly comfortable. So anything colder than that, they do really well. You start getting into the below freezing temperatures, you know, 20s, teens, negatives, uh, then, it's, then it's more of an issue with the cows. Um, but yeah, here in California, the, the cold is fine. Uh, the rain, uh, we do watch out for the rain. We have all the cows housed inside right now. Um, we haven't had a big rain yet, but part of the reason for that is we can maintain and manage the free stalls very consistently. So the free stalls are where the cows lay down, and we design them so that the cows can lay down very comfortably there, but when they go to the bathroom, it goes into the flush lane, not into the bed. And so we can keep that bedding really consistent, really clean, really dry. Are these like the juniors? No, I don't want to be gonna go get bred um, pretty soon. So oh, be, really? Yeah. So they're ready? Yeah. We start breeding around 13 months old is okay. when they when they can get bred. Here, uh, you can see the fans are actually on, so we're talking on heat stress. Um, up here, all on the feed line, this here is our soaker pipe. Yeah. And so you can see these are all angled down. Right now, it's not hot enough to turn it on, but these come on at 75 degrees, and they cycle on uh, depending on the temperature. But at 90 degrees, they're on full cycle. So once a minute, or once every five minutes, the cows get a minute of water on them. And this is big drops of water, so it's like getting out of the pool on a windy day. And then in conjunction with the soakers, we have the fans, which is that windy day. Um, it's able to really rapidly cool the cows down if they get overheated. Um, used to be without fans or without soakers, especially if the barns weren't high roof like this, natural ventilation. Um, you know, you'd go by on a 100 degree day and you'd see 70 or 80% of the pin just panting, panting with their tongue out. But uh, with these fans and soakers and everything, I mean, we had 105, 107, and if there were one or two cows that were slightly stressed from it, that was it. So it, it really has made a big difference on breeding, on milk production, just on cow comfort in general. So, so there's something pretty cool over here that yeah. I have a question about. Yeah. Looks like you have a big uh, solar farm here. We do. We have a really big solar farm. We just um, got hooked up to the grid in March. So it's been, um, we actually produce, a, this is a 970 watt, uh, 
kilowatt um, solar facility. So we are able to generate enough energy to run our entire farm. That wow. Is awesome. Yeah. So, so your entire farm. Yeah. So that's like with milking parlor, with the lights in the barns, that's with our pumping for our, our um, for all the, all the irrigation, everything. So. Okay. So let's. Does yeah. it, so, so does it, uh, that you're able to do the entire farm with it. Does it do any excess? It do, well, it does a little bit excess. So, so it has, um, for us also, like all of our employee homes are on there. Our house is on there. My, my in-laws are on there. Um, we have a little bit extra and that goes back just into the grid. The, the company who put them in is just, it's called new gen energy. So they put it in, um, they do actually two cleanings a year. So we're, we were hoping to get some rain to clean them off. We haven't got rain here by us yet. Um, but they'll do it um, kind of in the summer um, and then what we'll kind of, but they like to clean them twice a year. So that's kind of how often it is. So it has it, they haven't been cleaned yet because we were doing a lot of field work and planting and different stuff. So they haven't cleaned them yet, but um, yeah, it happens twice a year. Thank you so much for watching today's field trip. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button. I just want to say thank you to all the viewers and my awesome sponsor, Corteva. I will catch you guys at the next one. Sustainability. It's who we are and what we do. We're in it for the good of farmers. We're increasing the livelihoods and sustainable practices of 500 million smallholder farmers. We're in it for good.